Hey guys, so here I am. I've made my way to Piermont and I've caught up with the man himself, Jake from Seed Electric Bikes. And Jake, today is going to talk about cargo bikes. Oh yeah. So uh, fill us in, mate. What's going well, on? Well, we have a lot of cargo bikes. We've been doing cargo bikes for since the very beginning we started 12 years ago. Pretty exciting, it's for families generally. Um, think one kid, two kids. I'd use a bike, but you know, I've got kids. I've got to be able to get kids around on, on the, in my car. It sort of, it gives people a reason to have a car, but in actual fact, a cargo bike, especially a lot of these ones, can carry one or two kids quite, uh, quite easily. It's booming overseas. I would say we've always done a lot. There's a couple of shops here, Omafiets, um, Glowworm, that also do a lot of cargo bikes. A lot of traditional shops that might be getting into e-bikes and loving them, they're really not aware yet. They don't understand, they don't get cargo bikes, but we certainly do. The idea is that you can haul a lot of stuff and kids around, which is really fun and, and uh, you know very practical. So yeah, in Europe, you've got amazing growth of cargo bikes. You do have sometimes better infrastructure for it. Some of the cargo bikes have got two wheels, some have got three wheels. Uh, and the tub trikes, which are really fun, are a little bit impractical in Sydney sometimes because if you're in a congested area, there's not as much space to actually ride them. So most of the ones we sell are the two wheelers. Having said that, we do do some three wheelers too. They are a bit expensive in general, uh, often because they come with pretty good systems like Bosch and Shimano, although we do have some that start at around $3,000. Uh, but typically the price is five to seven or eight grand, which yes, you could buy you know, a car for that, but you don't get the joy of and the fun. Kids come here and get on bikes and they always want to end up getting a cargo bike in the family. And it makes them want to be out there. It's an adventure, it's fun. They're obviously heavier and certainly sometimes it's a bit of a step up in terms of skill set to be able to ride them. Some of them are easier than others in that regard and I'll, I'll go through which ones work better for certainly the design, like a step through for women and also just the overall center of gravity and the geometry. We would basically say there's three types of cargo bikes, right? You've got short tail, maybe over here. This is a smaller one, so one kid only. You're not going to get two kids on that, so that's not going to happen. And that's a turn HSD. Then you've got mid tail, which I would say is these guys here. So two kids, um, you can get two kids on there. They're going to be a little bit cramped though, but you can certainly accommodate two kids. And then you've got Long tail, that's a long tail. I used a version of this with a factory fitted easy motor many years ago and I must have done about 10 or 15,000 kilometers on it with my two daughters. I couldn't live without it. And people who get cargo bikes go, oh my God, what was I doing before? Think you, you live near a beach, on the weekends you can't get a park. Um, you can go Rockstar Park, two to five k's away. It's a fun experience. Like they're all e-bikes and cargo bikes are all about the journey is, is, is as exciting as the destination really. I'll give you a quick example, quick idea of how well e-bikes and cargo bikes can work. So I had this bike years ago. Our first shop was down the road here. My oldest daughter was doing active classes down near Wharf 2. So her friend's mother would drop them off and I would pick them up and get them home, okay? And I also had to pick up my younger daughter from, from daycare. So the friend's mum would go down, drive down at three o'clock after all the rush. It would take her from the inner west to get down there about 45 minutes to an hour and then back, so like an hour and a half of her life. Then I would at 5.15, we closed at 5.30, then I would get out at 5.15. I'd ride down across the Pimont Bridge, down through Hickson Road, and I'd end up at Wharf 2 in about eight to 10 minutes. The kids would be ready, they'd jump on the back, two kids, and a long tail can actually carry three kids, or even mum, dad, and a kid. And then we'd go all the way back to the city, bumper to bumper, traffic going nowhere, me just hitting bike lanes, or you know, just going to the front of the line. And then all the way back to daycare, where I'd get my younger daughter, she'd jump on, and I'd drop my friend's daughter off at home, and then we'd go home. And we'd do that whole thing in like 45 minutes. In a car, it's just, it's not even an option. Plus so emissions, that's, all that yeah, sort of emissions stuff. And the cost and the yeah. parking fines and the I was, city I was and yeah. looking at this one I thought for school drop off in the morning yeah rather than because so, we literally drive five minutes to yeah. school and school drop offs all the time converges at the same Crazy. time. It's yeah. a nightmare, right? Yeah, and a lot of them come with accessories. So these come with a bread basket, they call it, which is a big basket on the front. Mm -hmm. So it's often about accessories too. So obviously kids' seats are designed to sit for the younger kids. But when they get to a certain age, they just sit on there. It's just yeah. like they're just riding shotgun on the back, you know? So they're aftermarket or yeah. they come with a bike? No, that's aftermarket. So all the accessories like yeah. this is extra. Some come with a lot of stuff, some don't. Yeah. But these seats, these are the Yep seats. They've actually gotten so popular on these bikes. They have a shape that is designed for this exact seat. So that there, that shape there is designed exactly for this seat. So it clips in. So yeah, that's a monkey bar. So that's designed to go around that one. So once they get to a certain okay. age, if they're old enough to be responsible, they'll just sit and hang out there. Yeah. If they're old enough that, well, they're not that old and they've just gone out of a kid's seat, but they might be. The big thing is they get sleepy. It's like getting in a car after you've been yeah, to the yeah, beach. Yeah, for sure. You know, get on a cargo bike from the beach, and they'll be wanting to go to sleep straight away. So, uh, and it's also just a sense of safety, they have something to hold on to. In terms of what we have, they start at the most affordable one is here, this is Uno Rao, which is a new model we've been doing. Basically, it's, uh, it stands for Europe, North America, and Australia. That's what Uno Rao means. Affordable, now obviously with affordable, they usually cut some corners. Um, 
the, the brakes they fit a cable the front brake really we don't think is good enough for the weight that you're carrying so we upgraded always to hydraulic so that's now an upgraded hydraulic brake the group set the chain cassette and it's a rear hub motor so it's the most affordable e-bike we have we do some upgrades on it but for about three to three and a half grand you can get an electric car bike which is great and that's why we decided to stock them because it would be great to be able to bring the price point down to make it more accessible to more families same bike but the mid-drive version which i prefer a darfu mid-drive so Chinese mid-drive, not your Bosch, so not a German company or Shimano, Japanese. Obviously it's gonna be more expensive, but a really nice ride, good weight distribution. It comes with accessories, you know, the foot pedals, the pegs on there, if you notice the foot pegs, they're a lot shorter than the one over there, the spicy curry. And that's probably, you know, that's not as a good design, really. Um, but for value for money, this one's about three and a half, so pretty, pretty cool. Uh, then you've got Uber as a brand. Now Uber, we've been dealing with for a long time. The distributors who are cargo cycles involved are lovely people to deal with. Uh, and Uber's an American brand. They've been around for like 15 years. And they have the Combi, which is a great name for a bike. And the Combi is uh, a, 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 for two kids, so a mid-tail. They make one with no motor on them and one with one. So this is the Shimano-based uh, Combi, the E5. And not a full step through, but partial step through, so good for men and women. Um, Shimano motor, not super high torque, but relatively light. So there are some issues there where if you live in a very hilly area, one of the big things we do here, right, this is really important to explain, and we're really proud of this, is we do proper test rides here. When people come here, though, they may not have ridden a bike for a while. They may not have ever ridden a, a cargo bike. We want to know that a family can come here. We get on usually the mum or the dad separately, make sure they feel confident and they're ready to go and then get one kid on and then two. It's all about building people up so they don't get totally spooked or feel un unsafe when they're riding. And it's amazing how many families who now ride every day on a cargo bike who first, when they came in here, probably would have thought, mm, I see other people doing it, but I don't think I'd be able to do it. And it's not that hard. Two wheelers in particular are just like a normal bike. It's just a bit longer. Get a bit of practice and you ideally will need to build up your own muscles a bit, to be honest. If you look at Europe and the number of families over there that are buying cargo bikes, it's, it's crazy. So that's the Combi. Uh, they make one without a motor. And so we fit a mid-drive conversion kit a thing. So the most important thing to understand with, a, with any e-bike really, but especially on a cargo bike, is if you're slowing down and going to stop, you need to be changing to the right gear. Some bikes have hub gears, like the Easy Without Find, so you can change gears whenever you like without pedaling. Wow, that's great. But most bikes have a standard chain and cassette, and you can't just suddenly change gears. So the worst case, you're going to be like, all right, kids, get off. Yeah, so that's the combi. Then you've got the Spicy Curry over here. Great names too, they come up with really good names. Like, so Spicy Curry, cool. Now the big difference here, the, the Combi has two 24 inch wheels, so the wheel geometry is quite important because what you want is how do you make that weight feel comfortable and to feel it's manageable, that center of gravity. So what they've done here, 26 on the front, but 20 inch on the front, on the back. So you can imagine young kids, especially two kids in a kid's seat, that's gonna have a much lower center of gravity and it's gonna feel more comfortable and more manageable. Um, the only issue there is as those kids get older, let's say they're eight, nine, 10, whatever, they will get less comfortable because they're sitting on a 20 inch bike, right? Um, but for, certainly for young kids up to about 10, that's gonna feel good and a lot of women will ride that. Also Bosch having the battery and the motor in the center means quite a nice center of gravity there. Uh, Bosch is powerful, they use CX cargo motor, quite powerful, whereas the Combi uses a Shimano 6100 motor. So if you live in a very hilly area, like I don't know, Lower North Shore, Northern Beaches, Paddington, Malara, you need to be sure that with one or two kids you're gonna be able to get up that hill. But of course, when you come here, you test ride. We don't sell these just looking at them. And we have a very big hill down on Harris Street down at the park here, which is pretty steep and that should give you a good indication that it's gonna be workable. And that's why some people might opt for something different. And we'll talk about mid-drive and hub in a minute too. A lot of stuff to cover through that. I'm sorry about that, but it's just the reality, you know, with all this choice. Um, so that's the spicy curry, but we're jumping up in price. We're now looking seven and a half, eight grand. Again, that sounds like a lot, but I guarantee you for customers like myself who used that every day and did about 15,000 Ks over three years, you can't put a price on this convenience, the fun, and also the price saving over that period of time, which leads me to something very important. We now have rent to buy. We use Studio 19, which is basically a rental system where you can even rent for six months and then hand it back if you like. So you can space that payment out. So it's not necessarily gonna be a huge upfront payment straight away. Our rent to buy plans usually mean you pay a balloon, like a balloon, a certain amount to start, but you might say, look, I came in here looking at the cargo bike here for three and a half grand, but gee, I got on the spicy carry. Let's face it, it is a much nicer bike, but we can't afford that. Well, put your money down there and then we'll let you pay this one off for three to six months. So that's something to talk to our staff about as well. Then Uber's got an Another one over here, the Mundo, which is the one that I used to use when it had a front hub motor on it. The Mundo is the longest one of all, and I loved it for a guy, I felt really comfortable in the geometry, whereas the smaller bikes might feel a little more cramped. But it being a step over, because the kids might be on the back, now if they're old enough to just jump off, you stop and say, hey, get off kids, 
then it's not an issue. But if they're young enough that they're in a kid's seat, you're gonna be able to get off the bike, put the stand up and get to them. But this is my favorite bike. Another little quick side story. I have a friend who lives up near the Colo Heights and we used to get the train to Richmond with my two kids and I'd ride from Richmond Station to Colo Heights, 53 k's away. Two batteries, so I was draining it. And it took us about an hour and 15, an hour and a half. Great adventure, didn't need to drive there. It was fun, there were really memorable times visiting my friend up there. So yeah, long distances. The distance you're gonna get, like all e-bikes is anywhere from 30 to 80 k's, depending on what, uh, but a lot of cargo bikes come with relatively big batteries because of course if you're carrying a lot of weight you're going to be draining battery all right so what can, you, what can you expect to get out of well this battery this battery is a like high torque shimano motor it's their ep8 motor so 85 yeah. minutes yeah the batteries are 500 watt hour so look probably realistically 30 to 50 with high power in in a very hilly area a relatively mm. flat area 60 to 90 you know so it's very dependent on on your terrain and how fit the rider is and if you're carrying one or two kids will make a big difference and in yeah. just a quick question in terms of battery life how do you how do you look after the battery and make sure you sure. get the most out of yeah. it yeah so with batteries lithium battery technology is the same across a lot of technologies and industries so tesla cars tesla powerwall your bosch power tools it's all the same kind of concept right and they they generally have small kind of a double a uh, triple a size batteries uh, they might have prismatic cells or flat pack ones but the concept's the same basically there is no memory effect like old batteries um, you don't want to run them flat as a habit it's not a good idea to do that topping them up is fine so people often think oh i've got to flatten it because then it loses memory that's like from the 90s that's yeah, a long time ago so no you just basically use it and top it up so topping it up is better to give you a quick example of the technology this might help um, explain that i have a tesla powerwall at home so i've got solar panels and a power so a battery bank to run the house I'd love to say most of my houses run on that, but they're not really because I don't have enough cells really mm. on the roof to do that. But when they are, they guarantee me, Tesla guarantees me a 10 year warranty. Most e-bikes are one year. It's the same technology, right? The same battery cells. So what's going on there? The reason they can do that is because when that battery, so let's say it's 100% charged, once it gets down to 80%, so it's used 20% of the battery, that's flat. That, in their mind, that's when they say, Duh, flat. Mm -hmm. So you're only ever using 20% of the battery. That gives it a really long lifespan, mm -hmm. okay? So whereas with e-bikes, obviously to have a battery that was only gonna be using 20%, it'd be massive, it'd be too heavy. Yeah. So if you use your battery and run it flat as a habit, let's say you ride a commute of 10 k's to work and back, and you reckon you can do three days, and on that third day you get home, you're almost running out of power, you'd be much better to charge every day or your second day. Okay. That's just the way it is, so yeah. And they last anywhere from 500 to 1,000 cycles. If you buy a cheap e-bike, <laughs> mind my French, they will use the cheap generic cells that won't do that. They'll do 100 to 150 cycles. So of course the cheap pay twice, both in quality of motors, but also the cells is one of the most, you don't see them. They all look like just a battery. Mm -hmm. But in actual fact, when you look at the price of things, also the guarantee, you know, and the backup, will you be able to buy that battery in the future because that company's around or is it some little small startup with some guy who thinks, oh, I can just get a container of e-bikes, flip them and make all this money. It doesn't really work out because they realize it's more complicated than that. And then they disappear and you've got no one to help you. So avoid that. Easy, easy we've done since we started this company. So great company, Ching, the owner who's in Shanghai. I was the first person to put a lithium battery on an e-bike 15 years ago. They do a lot of different bikes, but this is our most popular cargo. It's a low step through. So for women, it's really easy. A little cramp for me being relatively tall. Uh, and also the wheel on the back is 24 inch, the front is 26. So again, it's a good, slightly lower center of gravity. It comes with some really nice components. So this one's got Alpine brakes, Alpine hub gears. You get everything with it. So the side rail, you get whereas some of the other bikes and, and Uber you have to pay for those things extra and it's very powerful but it's a front hub motor so front hub motors powerful hub hub motor are generally less popular these days than mid-drive there's a whole other video about mid-drive and hub but basically hub motors work very differently they're very generous for power irrespective of what effort you put in a mid-drive can give you a lot of power but it will reward you for the effort you put in and they won't work with throttles generally so the thing is the, the reason they're easy is very very popular still is because it doesn't take a lot of effort from you pedaling it'll give you a lot of power so for someone who needs extra help very big hills two kids it's great the only downside is traction obviously if you had a wet slippery surface like sydney circa the last two months and you also have a throttle so if you hit the throttle on a steep hill you can't expect it to be very stable that wheel's going to spin around so you want to be pedaling a bit to get rear wheel drive mm -hmm. but the weight at the front works really well i believe because a lot of the weight's going to be back with kids on the back so if you look at this one here behind you that's a high torque rear hub that's great but you've got kids on the back and a motor it starts getting like pretty bloody back there uh, which will yeah. change the hand the steering and the handling so easy is great also about four and a half grand so not super cheap but not the most expensive mm -hmm. viron's a new one we're doing so i can't say a lot about it this distributor in melbourne it's very similar to the you know rail behind you but a bit bigger and longer it's actually quite a long bike and it comes with bigger footrest which is which is cool and it's really 
rear hub, not quite as powerful as this G20, but still high torque, and it comes with hydraulic brakes out of the box, and nice gears and the throttle on the left, which is better than what uh, these models do, where they put generally a throttle on the right. We've actually changed this whole system to make it better, but these guys do that from the get-go. So good bike, Australian company, and about 3,500, 3,700. Now, the one you're actually leaning on right now, Dan, <laughs> is a Bicca Capacci Italian. I love it. Uh, we haven't had a lot of interest in it so far. We've only had it for a couple months, but I actually used it when my uh, youngest daughter had her 13th birthday this year. She wanted to hire a boat, so we're right, we're right near Darling Harvey. So we went down and hired a boat for a couple of hours, and we took down, we had adults as well, and I was like, oh no, we need to get the booze and stuff, because they, they had some snacks on there. So I went to the bottle shop, I got ice, and I ended up with like three bags of ice, a case of beer, wine, soft drinks, and I filled this thing up like you wouldn't believe, and I only had to go like 500 meters down the road, but it handles beautifully, really well. It's the same motor as the Combi, the Shimano 6100 motor, which is not as powerful as some of the other motors, but again, it's that bit lighter, and it handles really nicely. It's got um, hub gears again, so eight-speed hub gears, so you can change gears whenever you like without pedaling. But being Shimano, it doesn't have a throttle, which again, if you're a confident rider, and you know how to change into an easy gear before you stop, you're laughing. But really nice geometry, but about eight grand, not cheap. Comes with rack lights and mud guards, all that kind of jazz. Ah, and then over here, the turn. So the turns have been very popular, and so you'll see quite a few of these out there. Two main designs, HSD and GSD. HSD, which this one is this one, is uh, one kit only, Bosch Active Line. So it's not quite as powerful. So Bosch might look similar, but there's actually quite a few different motors. So whereas that one over here on the Spicy Curry is the Bosch Cargo Line. 85 Newton meters, this one 50. So obviously not gonna give you as much power up the hills. And also it's more affordable. This is five and a half grand. Whereas the version that they do with for two kids, the GSD, comes with that kind of motor and you're looking at more like eight grand. Uh, hydraulic brakes, very small and compact. The steering column folds down, which allows you theoretically to travel with it a bit because you can put it in the back of a car, uh, you know, and slide it in because this folds down. But being small, it's going to always be a bit more cramped. And the GST with two kids, you know, as long as the kids get on, if the kids don't get on and the siblings that don't like each other, it's not going to work very well because they're right up next to each other in each other's face. And you know, it's like when kids play in the back of the car, when they're fighting in the back of the car. Right? Um, <laughs> it's even harder on the back of a bike. Not good, yeah. Basically, in terms of space and, and uh, kids getting older and just comfortable, comfortableness, mm. is that a word? No. It is now. Um, comfort <laughs> or comfortableness. Comfortableness. Um, that's different space can be a deal breaker. And a lot of people get quite fixated on, oh, they look really big or they're really long. And yeah, but you're not really going to notice when you're riding. It's just a bit longer. Mm. You know, the handling changes, but get the bike that's going to give you a bit of future proofing and works well. Uh, but they're very popular and you can even hang it up like that way and like for yeah. storage and stuff like that. But I, this is my summary. All of our stores have a good range of cargo bikes. Probably Piemont has the best, but certainly Centennial has a good um, cargo bike following and choice of bikes. Hornsby, Engadine, um, Parramatta, a smaller uh, version of them. Don't buy a cargo bike or rent one unless you've tried one properly. And given we have the biggest range anywhere, I would suggest coming to one of our stores is a good way to start. Uh, we'll do a, do a booking, do a consultation. Don't come in a rush, you need at least an hour or two to do it properly. And these things are amazing, they're real life changing. They're a real car replacer. Cargo E, oh yeah. <laughs>